In this video, we will have a comprehensive overview of the B-17, with a particular emphasis on delving into the intricacies of its ball turret system. The ball turret, a crucial component of the B-17's defensive armament, serves as a formidable line of defense against potential threats, especially German fighter interceptors. Positioned strategically within the turret arc travel field of fire, the ball turret gunner plays a pivotal role in safeguarding the aircraft. Crafted with precision and innovation, the ball turret itself was ingeniously designed by the esteemed Sperry Corporation. Notably, the B-17 featured two major iterations of the ball turret, the early A-2 and the later A-2A. In the evolution from the early A-2 to the A-2A, notable modifications were made to enhance functionality and efficiency. One of the prominent alterations in the later model was the elimination of the collector ring and housing assembly, streamlining the turret's structure. Additionally, the plexiglass cover over the end ball assembly underwent revisions, contributing to improved performance and resilience in the face of adversarial conditions. Examining the later A2A ball turret provides us with a deeper understanding of the continual refinement and innovation within the B-17's defensive capabilities. This exploration not only sheds light on the technological intricacies of the ball turret, but also underscores the collaborative efforts and advancements that emerged during its development. The selection of the ball turret crew member hinged predominantly on physical size, with the individual possessing the smallest stature typically assuming the role of the turret gunner. This deliberate choice was driven by the confined space within the ball turret, where adaptability and compactness were paramount. Operating the turret while ensconced in a fetal position on their back, the ball turret gunner faced challenging conditions, given that the turret itself lacked pressurization, heating, and insulation. Enduring flights at altitudes ranging from 25,000 to 30,000 feet, the ball turret gunner navigated the skies while being sustained by life support systems. At altitudes surpassing 10,000 feet, the gunner relied on mechanically fed oxygen to ensure optimal breathing in the thin air of high altitudes. In the harsh environment of the ball turret, temperatures plummeted to around minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit, posing an additional challenge to the crew member's physical endurance. To counteract the extreme cold, the ball turret gunner donned a full-body electric suit designed to provide essential supplementary warmth. The crew member ingeniously connected their electric suit to the turret's rheostat, allowing for a regulated flow of warmth throughout the cramped cavity. This intricate interplay of technology and human resilience underscored the arduous conditions faced by the ball turret gunner, highlighting the indispensable role played by innovative solutions to mitigate the formidable challenges of high-altitude flight. Within the confines of the ball turret, the spatial limitations were pronounced, prompting most crew members to forego the use of parachutes or bulky flak armor garments. The rationale behind this decision was the restricted interior volume that rendered such equipment impractical. However, despite the absence of these items, safety measures were diligently observed, requiring each crew member to don a life vest and parachute harness. The parachute itself was strategically positioned in proximity to the fuselage, ensuring accessibility in the event of an emergency. Despite the compact quarters, the crew member ensconced within the turret enjoyed a level of protection afforded by the turret's robust armor and its integrated systems and components. Specifically designed to thwart a standard 30 caliber bullet, the ball turret's armor was a formidable shield for the gunner. The gunner's seat, constructed from a robust 0.6 inch thick steel plate, provided an additional layer of defense. Meanwhile, the curved bottom panel, fashioned from a 0.26 inch thick steel plate, covered the gunner's lower back, contributing to the overall protective design of the turret. Further fortifying the defensive capabilities of the ball turret, the curved entry hatch was fabricated from cast aluminum, seamlessly integrating into the ball turret armor system. This meticulous attention to detail in the design and composition of the turret underscored the paramount importance placed on the safety and security of the crew member occupying this critical position. The intricate combination of materials and engineering showcased the commitment to creating a resilient and secure environment within the inherently confined space of the ball turret. Adding an additional layer of protection, 
The hatch itself boasted a thickness of 0.26 inches, enveloping the gunner from the upper back down to the neck region. The Browning machine gun casings and interior components, meticulously crafted from steel, exhibited an impressive resilience capable of halting a broad spectrum of projectiles. This comprehensive safeguarding extended to shield the gunner's lower legs, as these steel-constructed machine guns formed a protective barrier. Intricate layers of ammo belts were strategically positioned above the gunner, creating a shield against potential overhead projectiles. This strategic arrangement not only enhanced the overall defense, but also showcased a meticulous approach to ensuring the gunner's safety within the confined space of the turret. Focusing on the critical component of aiming and firing, the turret's gun sight casing was a masterful combination of cast aluminum housing and steel parts. This amalgamation provided a robust structure with inherent stopping power against various threats, including projectiles, 20 mm cannons, splinters, and bullets. The amalgamation of materials in the gun sight casing exemplified a harmonious synergy between lightweight yet durable cast aluminum and the formidable strength of steel, fortifying the turret's resilience against a diverse array of potential hazards encountered during operational missions. Enhancing the survivability quotient, a noteworthy consideration stems from the fact that the ball turret gunner assumes a fetal position within the station, thereby minimizing exposure to potential projectiles. This strategic positioning was substantiated by a comprehensive study conducted by the U.S. Army Air Force, spanning from November 1942 through December 1943, analyzing the distribution of wounds among returning bomber crew members. During this time frame, it was observed that a higher number of bombers succumbed to attacks by fighter planes rather than ground artillery flak. Intriguingly, the data indicated that ball turret gunners and co-pilots encountered fewer combat wounds compared to their counterparts in other crew positions. However, it is essential to acknowledge the limitations of this conclusion, particularly in light of survivor bias. Subsequent studies have provided a more nuanced perspective suggesting that the survivability of ball turret gunners falls somewhere in the middle of the crew position spectrum. These findings underscore the complex interplay of factors influencing survivability, challenging the initial perception that the ball turret gunner's fetal position offered unequivocal advantages. The evolving understanding of survivability dynamics contributes to ongoing efforts to enhance the protective measures and overall safety of crew members in critical operational roles. In the event that a ball turret gunner necessitated bailing out, a meticulous sequence of actions was imperative. To exit the ball turret, the gunner would initiate the process by rotating the turret gun straight down, followed by opening the hatch to climb into the fuselage. An additional crucial step involved repositioning the turret guns, aligning the barrels aft to prevent potential contact with crew members assigned to jump out of the bomb bay. Subsequently, the gunner would affix a parachute to their harness, positioning themselves near the aft crew door, ready to execute the abandoned plane order. Notably, the gunner's jump would be timed immediately after the right waist gunner's descent. In the scenario where a plane was destined for a belly landing, specific protocols dictated the jettisoning of the ball turret. Recognizing the turret's potential as a landing hazard, crews were instructed to remove it before the aircraft touched down. The meticulous process of unbolted removal would consume approximately 20 minutes, emphasizing the need for swift yet precise execution. Considering resource conservation, crews were advised to contemplate salvaging the valuable Sperry K3 gun sight if deemed feasible. This endeavor involved an additional 20-minute procedure to delicately extract the gun sight from the ball turret. These detailed steps underscored the strategic planning and calculated actions required in emergency situations, ensuring the safety of the ball turret gunner and the efficient handling of valuable equipment amidst the challenges of aerial combat. To watch how B-24 Liberator's guns were upgrades to attack submarines, click the video on the left. To watch how turret guns evolved before and during the World War II, click the video on the right. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.